Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought, of course, that I would give my little fight review of the AJ Anthony Joshua versus Robert Elenius fight, which ended up happening most recently. And I actually didn't even know until I believe about a couple of days ago that AJ Anthony Joshua was supposed to fight today. Apparently, he was supposed to fight that of Dillian White in a rematch originally, which in my view actually would have been a very great fight. Would have been very interesting because both of those guys, they're kind of coming off of losses in their career. And, you know, they kind of need a little bit of a boost, of course, at one point in time also. Uh, those two fighters, they did fight. They fought in the amateurs, I believe. They fought in the pros for one of Anthony Joshua's first bigger fights. And AJ, of course, I believe was able to knock him out within that of the seventh round, uh, with it being relatively competitive for the first couple of rounds. Uh, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, Denny and White had to, well, <laughs> basically, that fight was canceled because Denny and White was caught on some sort of PED, or overall, he was caught on some sort of steroid. And isn't it very interesting that a lot of these LDBC and new media channels, you know, the same ones that were for Deontay Wilder, they were all on tearing down Dillian White when he was caught on PEDs against that of Oscar Rivas. But then against AJ Anthony Joshua, I hear almost no news about this from that of the LDBC or new media channels. Why is that? Because they were always Deontay Wilder fanboys and that was mainly their main excuse so that Wilder did not have to fight someone like Dillian White. And don't get me wrong, Dillian White, if he certainly wanted the Deontay Wilder fight, he could have fought someone like that of a Luis Ortiz, but that win, in my view, for Deontay Wilder against Dillian White, it would have been very big for his career, because to be quite honest with you, it would have been the biggest win of his career, <laughs> because Dillian White probably would have had the best resume and would have been the most experienced fighter that Wilder had ever beaten. And that's why when I always said that Wilder, that he never really had the best of resumes, I had certain people that said, oh, you're crazy. What are you talking about? He beat Brazil and he beat all these other guys. No offense, but the only guy that Wilder ever beat that was a legitimate contender was that of Luis Ortiz. And that's pretty much about it. It just is what it is. Certain other people can disagree with me all they want to. But even AJ Anthony Joshua, even though he has three losses on his record, AJ Anthony Joshua has beaten Andrew Weese. He's beaten Joseph Parker. He beat Vladimir Klitschko when he still was one of the top five heavyweights in the world. Uh, he ended up beating that of Dillian White at one point in time. Now he beat Robert Elenius, who Deontay Wilder has also beaten. And he's beaten some other guys that I'm sure I'm not even mentioning. Carlos Decom, uh, you know, and there might be a couple of other guys. All right, AJ has gotten in the ring with a lot of the bigger names. And that's not me saying that every single fight that hasn't happened is Deontay Wilder's fault. But in my view... There were certain fights that maybe he could have taken that maybe he didn't. So it is what it is. Anyways, just continuing onwards. Now to talk about the Anthony Joshua versus Robert Elenius fight. AJ Anthony Joshua, of course, for those of you that did not hear about the results, he did end up getting the KO, the knockout over Mr. Robert Elenius within that of the second round by a good fake with the right hand uh, or with that of the jab, pretending that he was going to go to the body with the right hand and then coming up top with that of a right cross right down the pipe. And of course, he was able to knock out Robert Lenius pretty much with that one punch. Uh, now, the fight, some people may say, was relatively competitive. It was competitive in spots, but a big part of the reason why it was competitive is because AJ Anthony Joshua, he just was not really throwing a whole lot of punches in this fight. And do I believe that this was a super duper competitive, or excuse me, do I believe that this was a super duper impressive performance by Anthony Joshua? No, I don't. And of course, a lot of people would even say that this performance was quote unquote piss poor from Anthony Joshua or that it was a very poor performance. The reason why I'm not 100% going to label it that, even though it's clear that Anthony Joshua, in my view, is more gun shy within his past couple of fights, is because I'm not really sure if Derek James or Anthony Joshua, if they're just kind of trying to work on certain stuff with maybe trying to develop new skills for that of Anthony Joshua by working on his feet and working on his jab and working on his head movement. Uh, or if Anthony Joshua, if he just is that gun shy from now on, then he's not really going to ever be truly the same. It could maybe be a little bit of both. Personally, in my view, 
ever since Anthony Joshua has lost that first match to Alexander Usyk, I don't think that he's ever looked mentally the same fighter. You know, because even that first loss against Andrew Ruiz, Anthony Joshua, it was very clear to me that he was not in the same shape that he probably had been previously. I think that he took Andrew Ruiz very lightly, and I think he took a look at Andrew Ruiz and said, you know what, I'm going to knock out this Mexican marshmallow <laughs> in about three rounds. I don't even have to work out properly within these next couple of weeks because, of course, for those of you that don't remember, it wasn't supposed to be Andrew Ruiz for that fight. It was supposed to be Darrell Big Baby Miller, but, of course, he was caught on PEDs. Very unfortunate uh, that Jarrell Big Baby Miller was exposed as a PED user because that could have been a very interesting fight. Jarrell Big Baby Miller was a decently stocky uh, and decently talented pressure fighter. But, of course, you know, certain things just don't end up happening the way that we would like them to. But anyways, even that first loss that Anthony Joshua ended up suffering to Andy Ruiz, at least Anthony Joshua could say, well, you know what? Uh, I didn't really put my best foot forward. I was not in the best of shape. And on top of that, uh, I really heavily underestimated this guy. Uh, and, you know, he's not the proper guy that I had trained for. You know, Anthony Joshua could at least somewhat tell himself a multitude of those things. And some of those were a little bit of valid excuses. I don't think that Anthony Joshua took Andrew Ruiz very seriously the first time around. I don't think that he was quite in the same shape because of his hubris because he thought Andrew Ruiz was going to be a much easier opponent than what he actually was. But in the rematch, of course, he was able to kind of take over. And then coincidentally, Andrew Ruiz, his hubris kind of got the best of him. And it looked like he clearly was not in the same type of shape. It looked like he had gained 20 pounds and it looked like all of it went to his midsection. He also had no game plan for cutting off the ring whatsoever. But anyways, that leads us basically to today. Anthony Joshua, of course, he was able to avenge that loss, and he had some decent performances. He had a very decent performance over that of Cool Brad Pulev, and I think possibly even another fighter, before, of course, he ended up getting to the fight against that of Alexander Usyk. Well, in the first fight, and pretty much the second fight, Usyk was able to pretty much completely embarrass that of Anthony Joshua. And when you get beat by someone like that of an Alexander Usyk, and they don't necessarily have to knock you out, but... When they show that they're pretty much better than you in every single category, that pretty much is more mentally damaging than the knockout loss that Andrew Ruiz gave Anthony Joshua because I'm not quite sure if Anthony Joshua is ever going to be able to come back from those losses because after that first loss, what's in the minor, the fighter's psyche and what's in their mind is that, you know what, I had certain faults in the past, I'm going to work on them and now I'm a better fighter as a result of it. But sometimes when they take that second loss, especially when they get completely outboxed and they can't even make the mental excuse that they were just more hurt or they got hit with the proper punch. So that's the reason why they couldn't win the fight. Anthony Joshua can't make that excuse in his head this time about Alexander Usyk. He got completely outboxed in both of those fights, in my view, about eight rounds to four in both of them. So once again, those two fights, in my view, you know, even the first fight was probably way more damaging than that of the Andrew Ruiz knockout or what it ever truly was, just in my personal view. Because when you get outboxed by that level of a fighter in Alexander Usyk, I promise you, to a degree, at least mentally, that is going to fuck you up more than certain knockouts, at least to a certain degree. And like I said, I'm not quite sure if Anthony A.J. Joshua, if he's ever going to fully recover from that. And I do think that we have seen the results a little bit within his past couple of fights. Now, once again, I give him credit for changing trainers. I give him credit for going to that of Derek James. I think that Derek James has clearly tried to work on his head movement. And I think that he's clearly tried to work on his foot positioning and overall him establishing distance and establishing the range. And there's certainly clearly some improvements from AJ Anthony Joshua, but he's going to eventually have to, you know, really put all this together in a great performance because he has not had a great performance ever since that of Kubrat Pulev when Derek James, I believe, was not even his trainer. So AJ Anthony Joshua eventually is going to have to try and put all this stuff together. Is he going to be able to do that, especially against a decently great fighter or against one of the top contenders like that of Dillian White or like that against Joe Joyce or, you know, that one Chinese guy that recently beat Joe Joyce or one of the other top heavyweights in the world? We'll see. Now, of course, a lot of people said that they would love to see the Deontay Wilder fight next, in my view. 
I'm not really sure if that's a fight <laughs> that Anthony Joshua is quite ready for. Because AJ Anthony Joshua, he's still in that phase of trying to improve himself. Deontay Wilder, I think that in his mind, even though he is very delusional, it's almost to a positive degree. And of course, against someone like that of a Tyson Fury, it's going to be a negative because there's almost nothing besides that of raw punching power that Deontay Wilder beats that in terms of Tyson Fury. So in that terms of delusion, yes, it's a very bad negative. But in terms of someone like an AJ Anthony Joshua, it can be a positive because Deontay Wilder, in his view, he doesn't necessarily have to have the technical abilities as an Anthony Joshua or the coach in this corner like that of an Anthony Joshua. In his mind, he believes that he has the better chin and he is correct. And that on top of that, he can more than likely knock out AJ Anthony Joshua before AJ does that to him. And more than likely, he also would be correct. I don't think that AJ Anthony Joshua, as of right now, would be ready for that Deontay Wilder fight. If I'm Derek James, if I'm in his corner, and if I'm Eddie Hearn, I'm trying to get AJ Anthony Joshua in the ring with a Dillian White, in the ring with an Andrew Ruiz, in the ring with someone else like that. That's who I'm trying to get him in the ring with. Or maybe not an Andrew Ruiz, because of course, <laughs> Andrew Ruiz, he's a guy that is always going to be a threat to whoever he faces, especially AJ Anthony Joshua, because they've been in the ring twice before. And you don't want AJ Anthony Joshua possibly having a little bit of mental anxiety in that fight. And on top of that, AJ, or excuse me, not AJ, but Andrew Ruiz, him possibly being more prepared this time. And who knows, he may knock out AJ. And if he does that, more than likely that Wilder versus AJ fight, it's done. Or it's going to be nowhere near as big as what it once was. So in my view, if you're in Anthony Joshua's corner, you're trying to get him in the ring with a guy that is going to be a true test next to see if he can truly pull it all together. You know, so we'll see what ends up happening with that. It's going to be very interesting to see what AJ Anthony Joshua is going to do. Now, do I believe that AJ Anthony Joshua is ever going to improve massively as a fighter? No, not necessarily. And this is the same thing that I said with Deontay Wilder when I seen him training with Malik Scott, I believe. Uh, you know, and all these LDBC and new media channels. And listen, they have the rights to their opinions. But like I said, I've never seen a fighter uh, that has been that flawed. Or, you know, maybe not even super duper flawed. But that was in their 30s or somewhere around there. That has been boxing for a very long time. Uh, and that they were able to pretty much completely transfer into a different fighter. Or get rid of all their faults. I've just never seen it. And that's why I did not predict Deontay Wilder to beat Tyson Fury. And I don't think that Anthony Joshua, that his faults are ever truly going to go away. Because kind of like with boxers, it's almost like that of raising a puppy or raising a kitten. When you raise a puppy or that of a kitten, you have to give them human contact in order to make sure that they're comfortable around people. Because if you don't train them properly, if you don't give them human contact, they can become a little bit aggressive or a little bit shy. And they're never going to be quite as temperament, excuse me, they're not going to be quite as in terms of a temperament, in terms of a calm temperament, they're never going to be cool and calm and collective as maybe what other puppies or kittens may be. Well, it's kind of the same thing with that of a boxer, just in a little bit of a different category. For a boxer, you have to teach them the right basics from the get-go because you're forming basically a new fighter from the get-go. And when you form a certain fighter, with a certain amount of faults, they're going to basically continue with those faults because everything that they've done in the past has worked for them already. So why would it not work the next time? So then when they finally get in the ring with that guy or that gal overall that ends up finally exposing a lot of their faults, they become all of a sudden mentally shattered because they're like, wow, this worked the past 17, 20, 30, 40 something times that I ended up doing it in the ring. Why all of a sudden did it not work this time? And not every boxer is Floyd Mayweather. Not every boxer is Terrence Bud Crawford or Tyson Fury or some of these other guys that have extraordinary boxing IQ or Canelo Alvarez. Not every boxer is like that. And we all know, uh, for those of us that pay enough attention, AJ, he's not a stupid boxer necessarily, but he does not certainly have a high boxing IQ. He just doesn't. That's why, once again, you get some of these fighters that get in the ring and finally, when they get in that ring with the fighter, that can expose a certain amount of their flaws, a lot of the times they're never the same again, whether they lose by decision or whether they lose by knockout because once again, they all of a sudden start second-guessing themselves. 
you know, why did I end up losing that fight? Why did this punch not work? It worked all the time in the past. What am I doing wrong? So then that means in the next fight, basically when they try to throw that same punch or throw that same trap or set up that same trap or throw that same counter, they'll say, well, in the past fight, I ended up getting hit by that and I thought that it was going to work for me before. So is it going to work for me this time? I'm not sure. And that's why the fighter or the athlete in general becomes a little bit more tentative and a little bit too cautious for their own good because they start overthinking and getting within their own head and they start overall double uh, guessing themselves or they start overall overthinking. All right. So like I said, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see where Anthony Joshua goes from here. Uh, you know, but I do, do I believe that he's ever going to massively improve? Probably not. I just think that he's too long in the tooth as a boxer. I think that he's a guy that he's just been doing it way too long. And he still did show a certain amount of the same faults. It just is what it is. He's not a guy that has the greatest ahead movement. Now, the thing that I did like about in this fight about Anthony Joshua is that he was throwing the jab pretty good parallel with that of his lead hand. Uh, you know, he was throwing some good uh, fakes overall to the body and then up to the head. Uh, you know, he was using his feet and establishing distance pretty well. But he should have been a lot more impressive against this guy. And I get that more than likely that he was probably working some stuff. But his jab still needs to be a lot more consistent. He has to throw a lot more punches. He has to throw a lot more with his jab. Uh, when it comes down to it, his head has to be still moving off the center line a little bit more. He still is a little bit too stiff and he still fights a little bit too tall. You know, I'm not saying that there is not some slight improvements, but do, does this Anthony Joshua come across to me as a guy that uh, is ever going to win a belt within the heavyweight division again? Not if he fights the right fighter, uh, just in my personal view. Would I also favor AJ Anthony Joshua to beat Deontay Wilder after the past couple performances that I've seen. Well, first of all, I'm not sure if AJ would have ever beat Deontay Wilder, although before it would have been possibly a 50-50 fight. This AJ, in my view, would not beat Deontay Wilder because Deontay Wilder, he's not someone that has great boxing prowess. He's not a guy that, you know, he has great boxing ability in terms of boxing IQ or a skill set, but he has enough. And on top of that, he has way more than enough athleticism and belief in himself and heart. And I'm not quite sure if AJ has any of those advantages over Deontay Wilder right now. You know, and uh, I mean, heart, you know, one that could debatably say it's around the same because both, both fighters have a lot of heart. You know, both fighters, I've never seen at least just completely quit uh, in a way to where I thought that, you know, it was completely, uh, you know, irredeemable. You know, at least in my view. And a lot of people, of course, said that he kind of quit in the first Andrew Ruiz fight. But he still gave it a good go, uh, in my view. I'm talking more about uh, kind of like how Victor Ortiz did against Marcos Maidana or something like that. But, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, this is going to be very interesting. But once again, would I favor AJ over Deontay Wilder? Not personally. Because Wilder, in my view, he would just throw too many punches. And no, there would be certain things that AJ might have the advantage in over Deontay Wilder. But AJ Anthony Joshua, I just think that it would be a little bit too big for him at the current moment in time. Uh, I think that Wilder was always an opponent to where he would take it very, very seriously. And I think at this moment in time that Wilder would be a little bit too dangerous for AJ to get in the ring with right now. So like I said, if I'm Derek James, I'm trying to get him in there with a Dillian White, maybe a Zhang or Zhang, the guy that just defeated Joe Joyce. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, someone else within the heavyweight division, someone like that, you know, someone like that. But like I said, we'll see what happens. Anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you later and we'll see where this goes from here.